So the subject is dragons in art. If, if India, Indian culture, Indian literature didn't have dragons, then why do we have so many dragons in Himalayan art? Well, really the source is China uh, and uh, north and northern China. Possibly northwestern China. We have really Qinghai and Gansu, where we have these uh, this concept of uh, prayer flags, uh, where you uh, uh, carve animals onto wooden blocks and you ink them and then stamp them onto paper, and then you throw these to the wind uh, on auspicious dates such as New Year's. So from this we get the the concept of uh, of these animals on uh, Bun and Buddhist prayer flags. And so we have the, the, the main animal, the horse, the lungta, along with the garuda, the tiger, the snow lion, and the dragon. With some bun uh, uh, traditions, and it's a yak, uh, a white yak. So we have different traditions. Now, with the astrology, we, we have uh, animals associated with the years, different years, and the dragon is one of those animals. So, so we have these two sources. Uh, prayer flags, uh, early prayer flags, and astrology, plus we have stories of dragons in Chinese literature. So this appears really to be the source. Now, with Buddhist art, from really the, the 16th century onward, we, we have uh, one of the 16 elders, one of the Lohan, the Arhats. Uh, in Tibetan, they're actually uh, Stavira, and not technically Arhats. Uh, so we have Vajriputra, who is often depicted holding a, either, either a bowl of water or a, or a vase. And uh, then above that uh, can appear a dragon. Now, this is actually coming out of the Chinese uh, iconographic depiction of Vajriputra, and then it is very often uh, copied in both the Tibetan system and uh, Chinese iconographic systems of the, of the Lohan. So this is one, one place in art where we, we find the dragon rather consistently after the 16th century. But then we have some deities. We have uh, White Jambala, a wealth deity, and the White Jambala is said to have originated with Atisha, and the lineage for it does not go back before Atisha except to Avalokiteshvara. So they don't have dragons really in India. Um, we don't have any Indian literature of a white jambala riding a dragon, so therefore it must be that, that this, this white jambala that rides a turquoise dragon attributed to Atisha is most likely coming out of a pure vision uh, experience of Joe Atisha, and it's very likely that it happened in Tibet, and that's where the tradition originates. Now, we also have the, the Nyingma protector deity Rahula, uh, related to Rahu, uh, the sort of evil astrological god that causes eclipse, and Rahula, the sort of conqueror of Rahu, uh, very, a very uh, prominent protector of the Nyingma tradition. And there, is, there are many different types of Rahula, and, and uh, coming out of the Dorje Dudul tradition, uh, who is a great uh, treasure revealer, then uh, his tradition places Rahula atop a dragon. Then we have Tsaringma. We have different kinds of Tsaringma in Tibet uh, we, from different locations, but we have the Tashi Tsaringma Five Sisters. And these, these five sisters play a role in the, in the life story of Milarepa. Now, this form of Tsaringma, uh, in this form, there's one of the sisters rides a, a, a dragon. Then we have Dorje Shukden. Uh, Dorje Shugden uh, is often divided up into the five Buddha families, and one of those, the Padma family, uh, the form of Shugden rides a dragon as well. So these are the main, the main deities we see in art that ride a dragon. Often, uh, uh, several of them are, are retinue figures, uh, and we will find others. There's other systems, especially of, of revealed treasure, uh, where... where uh, secondary figures, retinue figures, can ride a dragon. Now, these dragons do have some similar characteristics to Nagas and Makaras from India, but, but clearly these traditions are completely separate. The dragon of, of, uh, of China and Central Asia, and then the, the Naga and Makara of India. Now, in terms of uh, 
decorative elements. We do have uh, Vajra scepters that are made where you can have uh, nine or, or, or more, and even up to a hundred. I've seen them up to a hundred or more than a hundred prongs or tines on the Vajra scepter where they're all in the shape of a dragon. Now these, some people believe, are, are pre-15th century, but I actually believe they're, they're more likely to be either late Kangxi or more likely um, Qianlong period, so 18th century. And these were more often given, uh, likely given as gifts to uh, Tibetan and Mongolian teachers, um, possibly who visited um, uh, the emperors of China. So. They, they very, very much appear to be imperial workshop. Now, we also have uh, dragons thrown into narrative uh, uh, scenes, just, just as decorative uh, uh, elements. So this is really up to the artist. Then we have uh, the Torana, the, the thrown back on, on, for paintings and sculpture, we have uh, dragons, but this is again really coming out of the 18th century, and this is really an influence uh, of uh, the Qianlong Emperor, and also patronage from the Qianlong Emperor. We also get uh, dragon textile patterns. So, so the, the dragon is used uh, very much as uh, astrology, prayer flags, sometimes with uh, with uh, deities, protector deities especially, and then for uh, for decorative, decorative elements. So so this is really the main uh, uh, subjects, the, the, the main types of art where you see dragon imagery.